Hello everyone, welcome to Lana Tuesday. Today I, oh god, I am so mad because I filmed a whole ass video giving updates and I tired my voice and then the video file got corrupted so I don't have that file anymore and I'm kind of mad and sad about it but we just keep moving because of that I decided that I'm just gonna record a voice memo audio and then i'll add images and whatever i'm talking about is gonna be here on the screen hope you don't mind hope you enjoyed and let's talk about lana del rey yes first updates let's talk about the born to die 10 year anniversary the 45 magazine wrote an article called a love letter to lana del rey's born to die 10 years on the article is a lengthy article talking about everything regarding the born to die album and how it changed pop music in general i'm gonna link it down below so you can fully read it but i'm gonna read you like a little part that they wrote at the beginning the race major label debuted was mirrored in controversy and widely slated upon its release. But its brilliance has endured, becoming one of the most definite albums of the 2010. Ten years on, we revisit its story and legacy. The article was written by Sophie Wilson, 24th of January of this year. So I'm going to link it down below. You can go and check it out. Consequence wrote an article called 10 years ago, Lana Del Rey's Born to Die became the blueprint for pop melancholia. I'm gonna link it down below as well. Any article, anything that I mentioned here is gonna be linked down below. And I'm gonna read to you a little excerpt of what they wrote in the article. They said, Born to Die laid the groundwork for everything with her from Lana Del Rey's scent. The thrust that run through the LP to Ultra Violence and Norman Fucking Rockwell in particular feel strong but she laid the groundwork for so many other artists too billy eilish has pointed to lana del rey as key influence also on the day of the born to die 10 year anniversary honeymoon a very known insider that has a youtube account where they share songs that we haven't heard songs that were on release that lana never decided to release it that she just recorded and saved it or some that were about to release but we never got and demos and on the day of the born to die 10 year anniversary we got a born to die demo so i'm gonna link it down below you can check it out and hear that the french store of lana del rey is doing a context for someone to win a diamond disc with their name for born to die and you can uh, participate by adding your email and you have to live in france only only for friends to participate i'm gonna link down below for you to participate they send this via email so if you're subscribed to the Lana Ray friends newsletter you probably have that on your email but I'm still gonna add the link in the description down below so you can participate and also they mentioned on that email that surprises will come forward but I think those surprises are only for friends Lana's dad shared on his Twitter and also on his Instagram the photo of born to die and he wrote in the caption he wrote a little part of it of the caption on twitter and then he wrote a longer caption on instagram which is the one that i'm gonna read to you it can take many years to understand the moment when something changes when there's a subtle shift in our culture born to die change pop music i remember the first time i heard video games it was so profoundly sad and hypnotic but i could not stop listening to it in many ways, it reflected a deep underlying sadness for all of us. A harbinger, I don't know how to say that word, I'm sorry. A harbinger of things 
to come over the next decade. None of us knew then what a remarkable artistic achievement this album was. We love it. Robert always comes with the tea, the reality, the love, the poetic writing. I love it. We know that Lana got all of it from him, and we love that. The editor-in-chief of Interview Magazine, Melcy, he posted on his Instagram story on the Born to That Day. He posted a picture that I'm gonna put here. This picture. I love it. I love, 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 love Lana's hair color in this picture. I... Ugh perfect and also on this video that i'm gonna show you now that is from an interview that lana did for mtv news in 2012 where she talks about her writing and why what inspired her is the goal to make something that maybe transcends this era we live in that's a good question the goal is definitely just to sort of try and recreate like myself in song form that was really my only ambition throughout this whole thing. I mean, like, I've been making music for a long time, but it was really only ever just to please myself. Because mm. I really I, I really write because I love to write, and I sing because I like to sing. Um, and, um, yeah, it. I think the way that I make music is, is different from the way that some people make music, but only in the way that I write for myself and... Club 90s LA is a club in LA that make, they make like, for example, they take like Lana Del Rey, they choose a date and everyone goes to the club and they just play Lana Del Rey music. They're doing that, but only with Born to Die song. So they have two days. They have February 12th at the 1720 Warehouse. And you can find all of this information on their Instagram, club 90s underscore LA, or their website, www.clubs90sla.com. You have to be 18 plus to go also. And they also have the second day, which is February 25, Brooklyn Bowl in Philadelphia. I feel like a radio host right now. Super funny. I don't, I don't know. For the 10th year as well, the Grammys on their YouTube channel, they have like a series called For the Record, and they share a video called How Lana the Race Born to Die and Change Pop, and it's just a video of like a slide of pictures with information on the Born to Die album, how it influenced absolutely everything in pop, basically. And yeah, I think it's so funny that they make this video, but we'll never give Lana a freaking, a freaking uh, Grammy that she deserves. They give the Grammys to every single person Lana influenced, but not the person that influenced everyone. That is just so funny. I don't understand it. We got some more pictures uh, from when Lana was in Austin, Texas. So I'm gonna show you a little slide of those pictures right now. We got this picture of Lana and Nikki singing with the crowd in the back. Here's the picture of Lana laying down singing with a guy with a guitar. And then Lana on stage singing with Nikki and again another picture of Lana on stage singing with Nikki and we can see the crowd loving it. The boots, oh love this picture, so country and I love it. A uh, picture of Lana with her friends just chatting. Another picture of Lana with her friends. Another picture of Lana and Nikki. This picture I love so much. It's so like stunning. I don't know. It's amazing. I love it. It's picture of Lana with all the friends. We love, love, love. Another picture of Lana with her friends. Lana having some breakfast with her friends. And Lana sitting, I don't know, somewhere with her friends. And this picture that we saw before, but this is like, this is like the same, but different. You know? This Polaroid pictures, which I love so much. I love the filter they have. I don't know if they seem like old-timey. We have this one and we have this one. 
we also have this picture of lana with a fan taken with a polaroid which ah i love we have this picture of lana and nikki practicing i think another one of those them singing on stage another one of those another one of those and those are the pictures from lana's trip to austin texas gotta be honest i'm kind of liking this type of video format just like me recording the audio and showing the things on the screen let me know please in the comments if you like this way of me telling the news on lana or do you like me just filming my face and talking i feel like this is better so just let me know leave it in the comments your thoughts everything you think let me know it now let's talk about watercolor eyes how is she doing our girly polydor friends had an ad on the stories of watercolor eyes they probably still have it maybe you saw it that's on instagram and on spotify top songs debuted global watercolor eyes was at number three that's from january 21st to january 23rd okay so there's this amazing acapella group on tiktok which i'm gonna put the username here you can see a picture of them and the username is boys box acapella and they did an acapella cover of watercolor eyes and it sounds absolutely amazing so definitely go check it out i'm not gonna put the video here because i literally want you to go to their tiktok check it out comment on it like it and love it because it is absolutely amazing i'm gonna try and link that down below as well the army is weird the US Army I'm talking about. We talked about in my last Lana Tuesday that they decided it was like an amazing idea to post a fake Lana Del Rey quote on their Twitter. And <laughs> I don't know. I just don't understand it and I will never understand it. So Rolling Stone did an article about that. The article name is did the U.S. Army post a fake Lana Del Rey quote to boost recruiting? Question mark. Did they? <laughs> we'll never know. I'm gonna read to you a little part of what they wrote. You can find the same quote attributed to other parties entirely. Like this silent 9 second YouTube video from 2018 where he's paired with a photo of a horse. Frankly, it seems just as possible that the horse said it as Del Rey. Basically, they're saying this quote, obviously, Lana didn't say it. To me, the person that runs the Twitter account was looking for, like, inspirational quote for being brave or whatever. And a quote up here with a Lana Ray picture. You know those quotes that we see on, like, Facebook that they use as Joker picture and, like, a quote that he never said? I feel like that's what happened. So, we'll never know, but that happened, I guess. <laughs> let's continue with the updates. Now, let's talk about Lana's post on her honeymoon account. She posted a few little poems, and this is one of them. You can pause to read it, and she wrote in the caption, If we are lucky enough to lose, our lives become beautiful with mystery again, but that is not something that can be said. I, when she posted that, I was like, Lana, what? Are you trying to make me cry so early? Please don't, but thank you and continue posting because thank you. And she posted another poem called The Guest House. You can pause to read the poem. It is absolutely beautiful. And then she posted this, a little story uh, that she experienced over the weekend and you can pause to read it as well she just was like not having like she was like okay you know and she was at 7-eleven and the cashier when she went to pay for what she got said to her i just wanted to stop you and let you know that you have the most beautiful energy i've seen this week a lot of people come in here 
talking loudly, not looking me in the eye. So whatever you're doing, keep it up. I thought that that post was the most beautiful thing ever. And absolutely, Lana has like a gorgeous energy that just wraps you around in just light and joy. And I love that that man said that to her, made her day more beautiful. And yeah. And then she posted this picture on her honeymoon account alongside this one. In the caption, she said, get ready. I hate doing my own makeup. And now for a bit, we're going to segue into another topic that is related to Lana's post. So she posted this selfies of her at the artist inspired by music Interscope Reimage art exhibit with Interscope Records and LACMA. So she posted those two selfies. I'm gonna show you now some pictures that Getty Image took of the event. And we have this picture of her taking the selfies. We have this picture of her with Fergie. And these three pictures of her just being absolutely beautiful and stunning and gorgeous and perfect. Emil Haney posted this selfie and we got this picture of her after the event having some dinner with a friend uh, we got an article written of like everything that happened there and they show and they wrote a part of what lana thinks of this reimage of the born to die album so i'm gonna read to you what she said it's hard for me to look at their perspective and at first i thought it was too sexualized and too voyeuristic and then I talked to Yena and they said that that's the way we saw it. Going back to Lana's post on Instagram, she posted this gorgeous mirror selfie alongside a video of like a window. I don't know. And she wrote in the caption, so nice just having my OnlyFans account. And a lot of people were confused. A lot of people actually thought that she had an OnlyFans account. She doesn't. She, by OnlyFans account, she meant the honeymoon account where only her friends, her fans are in. And a fan later commented, oh my God, what's your username? Like, obviously as a joke. And she said, as a joke back, she said, hashtag, that's why they call me Lanita. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Lana is so funny. Like, I just love her humor. And I love her dad's humor as well. They have, I just love it. And Lana left her honeymoon account open for like 24 hours plus. And she got 1 million followers on that account. I don't know if she's going to open again the account. I don't know if she's like planning on announcing something there. I thought that she was leaving the account open for so long because she was gonna say something about the Born to Die anniversary, but she didn't say anything about it. So I honestly don't know. And I don't know if she has a plan or I, I don't know. All I know is I don't know. <laughs> and that is all regarding Lana's post. I am a poet. So the artist Silo, they shared a music video for the song aliens and at the minute three with 18 seconds we can see the violin band backwards over the grass book by lana and some people think that this means that they're gonna do like a collab but some others say that silo is just a big fan of lana and she just put the book there because of that so i don't know let me know your theories in the comments we also got an outtake from january 9 2012 photo shoot that Lana did with Terry Richardson for T Magazine. This is the picture. I just love her hair in this photo shoot so much. It's so perfect. Rachel Gason announced their song of the moment, which is Sweet Carolina. And Robert, Lana's dad, shared that on his Instagram and on his Twitter. And he wrote in the caption, Loved writing this song with my daughters. Began with a few chords in the living room, a bridge for the chorus, and a very and very quickly it grew into this beautiful song. Recorded the piano life on 
a magnificent Stanway concert grand. There's more to come. So basically he's saying that he's writing more music with Lana and I'm just happy about it because I love, I love listening to Robert play piano. Like I could absolutely be down to have a full album of just Robert playing piano. Like iconic, can't wait for it. There is more to come, people. Apple Music has an ad on New York City at a bus stop. And the ad is just like the Apple Music logo with Hey Siri, play Brooklyn Baby on it. So that is so iconic. And that for Brooklyn Baby on New York City. Oof, love to see it absolutely love to see it and last but certainly not least we are so happy for this news nme has nominated blue banisters as best album in the world oh 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 my god lana is one among many of the nominated for best album in the world in the world for NME and she's definitely gonna win it because I have said so. She just won. In my brain, she is the winner forever and ever. The award show is gonna be at um, Brixton Academy 02 in London on March 2nd, 2022. So let's get ready for that because Lana's gonna win. So. You know. And that is all the updates that I have for you today. I hope you like this format of video. I actually kind of love it, not gonna lie. So let me know in the comments if you like this format or the previous formats that I usually do, which is just filming my face and talking to the camera. This is my Instagram. You can follow me there for daily updates on Lana the Ray. My Twitter, I just retweet a lot of stuff and I tweet a lot of weird stuff, but it's fun. My TikTok where I post a lot, a bunch of edits. And subscribe here for weekly updates on another day and extra videos. And I love you all so much. Thank you. Bye.